Hi, so welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see here that the test board has had a bit of an upgrade. Uh, before we get on with the rest of the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It makes a huge difference to the channel and I'm very grateful for every single person who, who does that. Drop a comment as well if there's anything you want to see or anything you've got to say about what I'm showing you, then please leave a comment below. You'll see here we've upgraded the Luden board. So I've got a, a bigger split load board now. So we've got the main switch. There's the uh, 40 amp MCB for the surge protection device. And again, this is the pretend intake, so we're not factoring that this isn't actually the intake, but type two surge device. We've got an 80 amp uh, RCCB, and that's got the central heating V6 breaker on, which goes off into this boiler wiring center, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then another 80 amp RCCB at this side, which has got the lights and the sockets on. So the emergency light and these sockets here. And you'll see the, the fire alarm, I've actually labeled it a smoke alarm, I should say fire alarm, is on a key switch. And if we pop that down, you can see the neon illuminates on the fire alarm spare and the lamp comes on, which is simulating the fire alarm control panel because I don't have one of those, unfortunately. But if I pop the power off to that as well, that allows isolation at this point. And of course we can get test readings and, and things from here. I've used FP200 uh, into the consumer unit as well. And we'll have a look at that in a minute as well. Um, also with the, the boiler, you'll see there that that lamp's illuminated. So that's simulating the boiler. So we have a wireless receiver here, a wireless room stack, and it all runs through the wiring sensor. So if I turn the um, temperature down, for example, it should send a signal over and turn the lamp off. Actually, I'm not sure if I've got it set low enough. There we go. Just had to pop the temperature down a bit lower there because it's getting quite warm um, in the office. I haven't linked this into an actual heating device. Um, it is just a phantom board, but we've popped this uh, lamp on so it will indicate power as if a boiler was there. And again, if I turn that back on, you'll see that the, the power comes back to the boiler. And if I drop the temperature back down, it will go on and again, back on. So just an indication. So when that lamp illuminates, it's saying that the um, boiler is receiving power, pump will start to run and the heating will come on and that's run off this. But we're going to open the wiring center up. We're going to open this up and we're going to have a little look at exactly what's going on in there and demonstrate some of the tests that we can do uh, based on this new setup where we've got quite a lot of connected equipment that is vulnerable to damage especially when we're doing our, our IR testing and that's what we're going to look at in a mo moment. Okay so you'll see I've opened everything up now and we've got the, the ring final circuit into this V32 here and that goes through those same three sockets and as I said we've swapped one of the normal fronts out for that USB one there. So we've got a connected load now on that circuit that's going to affect our insulation resistance uh, readings. And if we were to put 500 volts between live and neutral on that, I know it would, it would break it. So we don't want to be doing that. Again, we've got the lighting circuit that we've already experimented with onto this emergency light. We've blasted that with 500 volts, didn't break it. It's just an experiment to see. So it's still working on this test part at the minute. And now we've added in this um, fire alarm. And again, we have to assume that this lamp is the fire alarm. We know that that would have electronics inside it and um, cause an issue for us. So for the time being, use your imagination. Again, now we've got the boiler control panel and this has electronics inside it. So we're gonna get some um, issues there if we start insulation resistance testing that. And of course, that's your, your boiler at the end of the um, circuit or in the system. And you don't wanna be putting uh, your 500 volts through that between line and neutral either. So effectively every single circuit on this board now is affected um, by that and it will drag the readings down and potentially break things. And it says in guidance note three that the acceptable method of um, doing insulation resistance testing in those circumstances is at the reduced test voltage of 250 volts and by joining your line and uh, neutral together and testing to where. So in this case here, we've got the, um, the smoke alarm circuit in here, which is the fire alarm. And it's a equivalent neutral is up in this bar here. So the main neutral bar. If I am to pop that out and pop this out. 
So they're both together now. I've set that up now. We're on the um, earth bar and we are on line and neutral together on this um, fire alarm circuit. Uh, you can, of course, leave it in the off position so it will just test up to the, the switch and the neon's not going to affect um, things as regards that. But we've bridged out anyway, so if we pop it onto insulation resistance testing, I need to turn it down to 250 volts and let it know that we're measuring between line and neutral and protective air, so it knows we've made that um, connection. And hit the test button. And it supplied the 250 volts, and it's showing we have above 500 mega ohms of insulation resistance. And that's with the line and neutral together and the CPC. And we've done that to um, prevent any damage to our um, electronic equipment here in the, the fire alarm panel, but we've also got this, this neon. Right, so we can split these apart as well, and um, on the fire alarm circuit here, I can test between line and neutral, isolators in the off position, so this is going to test the cabling down to the incoming terminals on this um, fire alarm isolator, and you'll see it measures above 500 megaohms. Now if I was to switch it into the on position and repeat that test, You'll see the neon and the lamp illuminate. I'm getting an insulation resistance value of 0.22 mega ohms, and both the neon and the lamp came on. So if we repeat that again, you'll see it's essentially um, providing power to the circuit and also measuring low insulation resistance because it's running through that neon, running through this lamp, and giving us a, a reading that's saying that the, the circuit's faulty. So you need to have that in your mind that even if you um, are testing between the line and neutral and you're doing it at 250 volts so you're not likely to cause damage to something, your results are going to massively be affected by what's connected in the circuit. And of course if this is a, a bigger installation and we've got a load of emergency lights and a load of USB sockets and whatever else connected in, you can't realistically be expected to dismantle the installation at a periodic inspection. So you would join your line and neutral together and carry out that test and that's in guidance note three and uh, yeah I'm going to pop this back together again now and then we'll have a little play around inside the new wiring sensor. Okay so I've popped the cover back onto the consumer unit, turned the power back on, um, I've left this isolator in the off position because it was blinding me. Um, I'm just going to pop this lid back down now using my crafted uh, lid support system and I've got the TIS859 just to show you exactly what's going on here. So this is the, the earth um, point, so we've got a DIN rail and some um, connection points and we're simulating a wiring centre. Um, you'll see here we've got the earth, the neutral, that's the um, line and that's the switch line from the receiver. So we bring uh, line neutral and earth into the switch fuse spur. It then pops up into to here. So we've got the earth point, the neutral switch from the spur and the line switch from the spur. So if we isolate this, all power off, all the, all the power goes off in here. And I can demonstrate that if I jump on the, the neutral here and the line, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's lighting up. I'm getting that vibration and it's showing me there's power there. If I then turn that off, that, that disappears because uh, we've removed the supply. Turn it back on and it does the same again. And just to prove that we've got an earth, you can see it's doing the same there. And these earth um, DIN rail connectors are actually pretty good because they clamp onto the DIN rail and provide an earth onto that as well. That's nice, you need to, uh, when you're specking these, these are Wyland um, DIN rail connectors, that you get the ones that actually will provide an earth onto the DIN rail if you're mounting in a plastic enclosure, for example, or even a metal enclosure, and it, it provides that earth to the enclosure or the DIN rail through this, rather than having to take a fly lead onto it. So that's something to watch out for when you're ordering these things. Now we'll just wait for this to power back up and get itself connected, and you can see it's done that. If I pop the uh, phantom controls down, we've now turned the boiler off. 
So if I go back onto the neutral terminal on this, this connector here and measure onto the line coming in, so this is straight out the spur, that's giving us voltage now, just to show we have power there. Now if I pop along to the next connector block, that's the switch line, so we bring in power into the spur, that's then been brought to this first line connector and it pops out the, the top of there into this receiver for the heating system and when that is switched it then applies the, the line voltage into this final switch line connector block and then out into this lamp or boiler. So if I pop that back on again you'll see the lamp illuminates and the TIS859 shows we have um, a voltage there. So that was just really to try and run through exactly what we've got set up on the board and again if we was to do an IR test on this circuit you would have to do your line and neutral together if you were leaving the um, isolator in the on position because your boiler circuit um, would be taking damage if you was to test between line and neutral. Um, so you put your line and neutral together and take that measurement to a, on a periodic inspection report. With it being a single piece of equipment like a boiler you know it's fairly easy to just disconnect it from that circuit so you can remove the connected equipment but if you are doing that keep in mind uh, the heating controls uh, and other equipment that could be damaged by that in insulation resistance test even now um, the uh, valve control modules two three-part valve electronic switches they all have electronics in there and if you start toasting them doing insulation resistance testing you're not going to make yourself very popular with the homeowner for example so make sure that if you are disconnecting, you know that the spare you isolate actually does take out of circuit all of the connected equipment and not just bits of it. Because sometimes, especially when the plumbers have wired heating systems up, it's not always as you think it should be. So that's worth keeping in your mind um, there. And again, if I've now popped the temperature down on this, so I can bring that up a bit closer, we've dropped it down to 12 degrees and that's turned the, the heating system off. Uh, now obviously with these exposed terminals I've tried to keep it as safe as possible so I can't get my finger in any of these to receive an electric shock anyway um, but I am used to working around live terminals carrying out testing I'm using the appropriate GS38 probes and making sure I keep myself at a safe distance from those and you know when you are fault finding especially with heating systems you're not often hunting um, a fault on the cabling or something that's gone wrong in a sense that we might appreciate as electricians you're often looking for a failed piece of equipment so it could be a pump um, it could be the central heating controller the timing module it could be one of these electronic receivers it could be a three-part valve and um, it could be a stat on a tank there's so many different things that it can be and you're not going to see those problems without um, a live voltage on there it's not a case of doing your continuity testing and doing your insulation resistance testing there is an element of live investigative work in doing that so make sure you're using the appropriate equipment to keep yourself safe and that that comes down to just the way that those systems work you know they don't switch over into certain positions without voltages applied um, you know you can get to a point with your dead tests and you should always go down that route first but sometimes it's unavoidable and that's one of the situations where if that's the case so anyway, I hope that's proved insightful to a point. Um, you know, we just kind of wandered around a few different aspects of testing and messing about on the board just to show it uh, in situation and you know some of the things we can do in the future. So we could do a fully ICR on this now. We've got three circuits, still not loads, but it's enough. And we've got some various connected equipment in the end of the circuits that need to be factored into the documents as well. So we'll maybe do that in a later video. We'll fill in a holy ICR document based on this as an installation and I could maybe even drop a few faults in here and there and show how they present in the test results and how you can find them to put them right. But for the time being I just thought we'd introduce the test board with its various modifications and upgrades and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.